The Thunder Screech was an experimental American turboprop plane created as an experimental variant of the F-84 Thunderstreak fighter jet. Development began after the Navy issued a requirement seeking a carrier fighter that could take off without a catapult, a problem still facing jet-powered aircraft at the time. Even though the Navy would cancel its order, the U.S. Air Force would absorb the project for testing. The Air Force hoped to create a plane capable of breaking the unofficial record for the fastest propeller-driven aircraft. The Thunderscreech's turbo engine was ideally suited for a supersonic propeller. At first, they promised that the aircraft would reach over a thousand miles per hour. However, this hope was dashed soon after aerodynamic deficiencies and engine reliability issues doomed the program. Not to mention that the propeller was so loud, it reportedly made crews on the ground physically sick. Early fighter jets had issues with increased acceleration and struggled to take off on short runways. Whenever a pilot needed to hit the gas to correct an approach or perform a go-around, it resulted in a terrible situation similar to accelerating from 5 miles per hour in a sports car at top gear. Republic's XF-84H Thunder Screech attempted to solve these issues. In 1955, they introduced a stubby high speed on the new jet. The Thunder Screech, named after the terrible noise of the supersonic prop tips when operating, resulted in the loudest and most disruptive aircraft ever built. By June 1945, the American Navy started exploiting turboprops or prop jet concept as a new solution to issues with earlier jets. The idea was that a gas turbine engine could drive a propeller at optimum revolutions per minute during flight. The power output would, in that case, be controlled by modifying the pitch or angle of attack of the blades. The turboprop engine was considered quicker and more easily manageable than a jet engine. It also provided the additional benefit of less fuel. The Navy preferred an Allison gas turbine engine created in 1944 under the label T-38. It produced 2,250 shaft horsepower with a considerable 14,300 revolutions per minute. However, a reduction gear ratio decreased it down to only around 2,100 revolutions per minute. Nevertheless, the Navy was interested in the development of Allison's two-turbine engine, the T-40, expected to generate 7,500 shaft horsepower. They believed the T-40, added to two T-38s, would result in an unbelievable aircraft. The idea was that the T-40 engines could counteract the torque by counter-rotating propellers, making the plane more manageable while flying at low speeds. Moreover, they believed the cruising range could be extended if one of the turbines remained idle during flight. The Navy decided to request a series of aircraft using the T-40. They ordered a twin-engine bomber for their carriers, a single-engine strike plane, a four-engine flying boat, and two tail-sitting VTOL fighters. The VTOL fighters were assigned to Convair and Lockheed. Still, both proved to be unfortunate designs that never progressed past the prototype stage. The two carrier plane contracts were awarded to North American and Douglas aircraft. Neither proved functional due to the engine's incredible unreliability. Due to this string of unsuccessful developments, the piston engine Sky Raiders from Douglas Aircraft served in Vietnam for around 20 years past their successor's initial construction. The Air Force, in turn, initiated a contest for Aero Products, Curtis Wright, and Hamilton Standard to create a high-performance propeller. Only Aero Products would design a functioning prop. A strange, tri-bladed airscrew with wide rectangular rip blades at 12 feet in diameter, the prop was intended for a constant rotation of 3,000 revolutions per minute. This left the outer 20 or so inches of the blades at supersonic Mach 1.18 speeds. 
Republic Aviation's XF-84H was superficially similar to the F-84F Thunderstreak, with most similarities coming from shared parts. Still, the air intakes were placed at the wing's source, similar to the photo reconnaissance variant of the Thunderstreak. The fuselage of the new aircraft was wider to give room for the T-40 twin turbine engine at the back of the cockpit. Furthermore, two lengthy extension shafts were placed through the cockpit to drive the single prop utilizing a reduction gear. Since the propeller generated such power, it also increased turbulence. To solve the issue, the horizontal tail surfaces were lifted and placed on the top of its tail fin, saving it from the prop wash. To assist with stability, another vertical fin was placed over the cockpit. Further attempts to manage the torque included moving the port side leading edge air intake closer to the starboard intake and an optional asymmetrical wing flap. The aircraft was the first to feature a fully retractable and extendable ram air turbine, which was somewhat helpful considering that the plane would struggle with various engine issues. The finished XF-84H was notably different from the F-84, and the Air Force temporarily considered changing its designation to F-106, but ultimately gave that designation to Convair's Delta Dart. The XF-84H had several revolutionary features, including its aforementioned retractable ram air turbine and its afterburner. The aircraft went down in history as the only turboprop with afterburners, which boosted output to 7,400 horsepower, allowing it to fly at supersonic speed. Unfortunately, these attributes, coupled with the afterburner, were never tested. The program was canceled before it ever really commenced. The XF-84H prototypes were plagued by engine, drive shaft, and gearbox issues. The worst and most cumbersome aspect of the experimental aircraft was the screeching howl generated by the supersonic propeller blades. Republic manufactured two prototypes at its Farmingdale, Long Island plant. They were then disassembled and shipped in different containers by rail to Edwards Air Force Base to undergo testing. The first prototype's maiden flight was July 22, 1955. While the aircraft yielded fantastic results with acceleration, several issues quickly became apparent. It turned out that the engines needed 30 minutes to warm up before taking off. Solely for this reason, the Air Force deemed it unfit for combat. But furthermore, it generated intense vibration from its 12-foot diameter propeller. Two, it suffered from mechanical failures from the prop pitch gear. These two prototypes completed a small number of test flights, racking up a mere 6 hours, 40 minutes of flight. Only two civilians ever partook in the tests. One, Lynn Hendricks, refused to fly it ever again, telling a Republic engineer, quote, You aren't big enough and there aren't enough of you to get me in that thing again. The other test pilot, Hank Beard, conducted the rest of the 12 flights. Due to engine failures and persistent vibration problems, 10 of his 11 trips concluded with emergency landings. Beard later stated the following about his experience, quote, It became a handful. When you got it out around 400 knots, the propeller governor would start surging, and the airplane would roll rather violently. The resulting vibrations were so bad because, ostensibly, the entire airframe was trying to torque around its own prop shaft, making it rotate left. In contrast, the prop turned to the right. The flight experience was so terrible that neither prototype was ever flown by an Air Force pilot, giving the aircraft a lonely record in aviation history. The biggest issue with the aircraft was the noise, which gave it the nicknames Thunder Screech and the Mighty Ear Banger. While taxiing, the XF-84H could be heard from up to 35 miles away. The outer inches of the propeller blades were traveling faster than the speed of sound, even during idle thrust. This caused a recurring sonic boom that went for hundreds of yards. More so, the shockwave from the boom was strong enough to knock down anyone near it to the ground. For example, a crew chief working on a nearby C-47 was incapacitated for 30 minutes when he was knocked over by a ground run. This, coupled with the engine's considerable noise, resulted in the aircraft's ground crews being notably nauseous and reportedly suffering from headaches. Most troubling of all, one of the Republic Aviation engineers had a seizure after being hit by the shockwaves. 
The issues were so disruptive that it even affected operations at the control tower for Edwards Air Force Base, almost damaging sensitive components through the vibrations. As a solution, air traffic controllers had to turn off several devices and detect the plane via light signals held by personnel. As no one wanted to be an unintentional victim of the shockwaves, this direction resulted in multiple complaints. As the Air Force Flight Test Center received more and more complaints, they ordered Republic Aviation to tow the plane out to Rogers Dry Lake before test flights so it didn't disturb anyone. The wide array of issues resulted in no further testing beyond Phase 1. The Air Force canceled the program in September 1956. The Guinness Book of Records reported that the aircraft was the fastest propeller plane ever constructed. Its design had a top speed of 670 miles per hour. Its tests supposedly yielded a maximum speed of 623 miles per hour. The claim has been repeatedly disputed for its inconsistency with the data collected by the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force, which marks the top test speed at 520 miles per hour. The 1989 rare bear version of the Grumman F-8F Bearcat holds a more established record of 528 miles per hour. Once it became evident that the aircraft would not work, except when attempting to land on deck, they decided to back out of the project. Only two prototypes were ever built. Although Republic Aviation had estimated that the XF-84H would be capable of reaching a top speed of 670 miles per hour, it never achieved an in-flight speed above 450. Had it successfully performed as intended, it would have become the fastest propeller airplane ever. Instead, the Russian Tupolev Tu-95 holds that record for its capability to cruise at 545 miles per hour with a top speed of 575 miles per hour due to its four 14,800 horsepower turbo propellers. One of the two prototypes went on to serve as a gate guard at the airport in Bakersfield, California, until it was sent to the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force in 1992. It remains there to this day.